welcome to We Are Live, where we make magic with our mouths. It's good camera action. I'm Chris Denman. That's Travis Terrell. It is We Are Live. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Travis, I'm excited to be here. How about you? Man, I can tell by the enthusiasm in your voice, Chris, that you're incredibly excited to be here. I definitely am. A uh, big show today if you want to be part of it and remain anonymous. 314 669 one four three one on the show today we'll play some devil's advocate Ooh. that'll include the uh governor from virginia and ja rule oh where boy. you see where we debate the two merits or punishments or validity of uh of two different possible outcomes here so uh in the nine o'clock hour if you're streaming live we'll have chris davis and he's from KSDK, Travis. He's a redheaded gentleman, a southern <laughs> gentleman, who's uh, fast turning into just a hard-nosed reporter in the city of St. Louis. So we're excited to have Chris in, and you can expect more media members in. We've got Ben Fred coming in later this week. So uh, media madness? We'll take uh, suggestions for a uh, My segment. Goodness. We've been wanting to be able to do this for quite some time, and of course, with our ties to radio, that makes it a little bit difficult, but... Uh, we've actually had Chris on our morning show. Which immediately negates your point. Well, no, I'm saying in this particular case, we only brought him on specifically to talk about a topic. Now we can bring Chris in to talk about other things outside of the things he's required to cover. Cuss a bunch while he's in. See how that goes over. With I would not do that. And, you know, I respect the Peacock brand. Yes. I would not do anything to... To soil their strong reputation. Uh huh. Be uh, be sure to uh, share the live stream if you're watching live. If you're downloading, thank you, and be sure to make sure you've subscribed and reviewed us on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen. So big thanks to everybody for tuning in. Thanks for all the support. Thank you to Tech Electronics for all the amazing equipment. Oh no, I got a jingle in the studio. I don't know. Tech Electronics, Electronics and Tech. Yeah. That was not approved. Mm. Tech Electronics officially does not appreciate mm. that. Mm. Uh, but they do appreciate the work that we do, and we can only do it because of the wonderful audience. So support Tech Electronics, and uh, if you guys, we'll probably have some kind of a party where people can poke their heads in and see all this I awesome equipment that, Chris. that uh, we <laughs> got from Tech Electronics. To invite the people. There was an individual that came to our studio yesterday that I'm almost certain is going to need a security clearance pass for the rest of his time here. That, of course, will be our good friend, Sean. Mm. to stop mm. by uh, to record for Dogs on Film tomorrow. Every Wednesday with Dr. Ed from Hillside Animal Hospital. And I have to be honest, that was the first time where I wondered whether or not the reception downstairs actually did their job. You leave her out of this. Mm. Love her. Uh, the man who brought Sean in, who's the voice of uh, reason when it comes to Dogs on Film, it's a very convoluted, weird sentence I'd said there. Yeah, I'm about to say. The great Chris Gardner, he's a producer and a controller of camera. Oh, there he is. Possum Cam. What's up with the lighting? Is it, is, uh, are, you, are you a little darker today? Yeah, he is. Look at him. Black History Month. Thank you. It's appropriate. Oh, no. Is that racist, Travis? Mm hmm. I mean, if I go with darker lighting. Is no. that as bad as blackface? That is not blackface. Mm -hmm. You did not take the time to apply <sighs> makeup to your skin, so it is not blackface. Thank In this particular case, you still worried about that? Just poor lighting. I thought we'd moved on past blackface. Um, oh my god! We're post blackface. Yeah. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm just a white man mm -hmm. living in the white man's oh world. Boy, Jesus yeah. Christ. So uh, mm -hmm. apparently, if oh, you sleep for eight hours, you get up and you've got a little <laughs> pep in your step. I found that out last night. Unbelievable. Did a bunch of work. I was tired. Just went to sleep around, I don't know, 10. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Before the news. <laughs> well, that's, that's late for me. What do you watch? You watch, watch, you watch the, the news? news with Chris Davis of KSDK? I, I, if, as you guys know, I'm a well-informed presenter. Mm. Uh, so I try to stay educated presenter. on the news. Okay. What are I you pre on? I present, BBC? I present facts when I'm on the show. What? I he do what, what I can. Hmm? Uh, yes, yeah, so I got a full night of sleep, and I kind of just uh, time traveled, and I uh, came to, and it was 6.50, and I was here at the office. It's like, I just, what's happening? What's going on? So we're listening to a uh, little Jason Isbell as I did some office work yes. this morning. Travis strolls into the uh, area. He's back in the back office, and he just hears, white man's world. Mm-hmm. If you don't, Jason Isbell, uh, he's got a song called White Man's World. Mm. And it's uh, about as understanding and uh, self 
examining and helpful of a song. Well, let's introspective. Say that you could have introspective, introspective okay, yeah. right. and a worldview. And I and I all I hear is that ready, Gardner, okay. ready, Travis, if I may. Okay, this is an impersonation of me. What the hell, okay. white man? What? Mm. Just like that. Uh, after Excuse I heard me. That, mm. So I had it on the in uh, the Mid Coast Media speaker system. Yeah, you did. Uh, we're looking for a sponsor for that. Uh, <laughs> what was the stereo store they worked at in the movie Airheads? Do you remember? Oh, uh, no. Good trivia question. Yeah, no. great trivia question. Classic film. Uh, <laughs> Brendan Fraser. Personally. Best. It's a cult I, classic. Personally, I celebrate Steve Buscemi and Adam Sandler films, so <laughs> thank you. Not a surprise. Uh, so we're looking, we're listening to some Jason Isbell. Everybody, uh, I'm listening and I'm forcing it upon you. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> Travis hollers out. I quickly remind him. You literally made this song racist, and you've been told about it five to six times. Right. No listening to the content, nothing. But Travis is so confident mm -hmm. when he just spouts off certain things that you almost believe it. He literally told me the arch was made of cheese the other day, yeah. and it got real weird because mm -hmm. I was self doubt was just riddling through me. It was you know bad. what? We're gonna jump. We're gonna take a quick deep dive. I know this wasn't a part of the rundown, but since you brought it up, you gonna read the lyrics. The song Jason Isabel White Man's Isabel. World. Isabel? There's no A in there. Mr. There's not. As well, that's even yeah, worse. It's not He's Tremaine definitely, Isabel. Definitely, definitely a white privilege. How are you going to take the A out of Isabel? <laughs> Isabel. Ooh. Okay. See what I'm saying? So the lyrics go, I'm a white man mm, living mm, in mm, a mm, white mm. man's world. Mm, mm. Can I get a uh, Trav cam? Oh, okay. There yeah. Go. Hold Thank on you. One second. Sorry. <clears throat> this is uh, Chris Gardner. He's an uh, audiovisual specialist. Oh. Good morning. There we go. By the way, shout out to the House of Mouse. Hmm. I'm a white man living in a white man's world under our roof is a baby girl. I thought this world could be hers one day, but her mama knew better. I'm a white man living in a white man's town. Want to take a shot of cocaine and burn it down. What the mm -hmm. mama wants to change that Nashville sound, but they're never going to let her. Okay. I, this is a very, Interesting song. There's no such thing as someone else's war. Your creature comforts aren't the only things worth fighting for. Still breathing. It's not too late. We're all carrying one big burden, sharing one fate. Real quick, real quick. You just rolled right through one of the most important lines in the song. Okay. The war, the war line. About the war? Yeah. Say we're all together in this. Oh, well. You're just going to brave. I, I just going to throw us in the mm. war. We didn't ask for this. Mm -hmm. I'd just be throwing us I and think stuff, that's guys. kind of the point he's making Oh man, that ain't how it works Okay, here, this is where it gets interesting, guys This is where the lyrics pick up steam I'm a white man looking in a black man's eyes mm -hmm. Uh-oh Wishing I'd never been one of the guys mm -hmm. Ooh, what does he mean? Who pretended not to hear another white man's joke Oh, the times ain't forgotten So is he saying that he was at a bar Heard a white man say a racist joke And he didn't do anything about it Now he's feeling guilty Yeah So white guilt Okay, this is interesting. So you, not at any point does don't Jason you, don't Isbell you apologize this? for the ignorance of his culture for perpetuating <laughs> hate and prejudice and segregation. Instead, he writes this dumbass country song. Oh, my God. Who, who are you, sir? Mm. I think that we should go back, take an additional credit points off of Chris from the Great American Race yesterday mm -mm. and apply it back to Travis. Why does the Chiron say I'm a white man <laughs> living in the white man's world? That's what the you said. I, just, yeah. I was reading the lyrics. This is what I mean by fake news. That's fake. Fake. That's an fake. exact fake. quote from you. Fake. That's an exact quote. This is basically how this show is going to go today. Mm -hmm. uh, on the show today, we'll do some uh, fair or foul. We've got 10 bucks to uh, our friends at Southtown Pub. As the prize, we've got comedy this Thursday. Our friends Yale Hollander and uh, Sarah Pearl, Quentin Wilbert, and uh, maybe one other. So we'll have a great Are show. Are really still calling Yale a friend? <laughs> he doesn't really come around much anymore, does he? No, no. no. Oh, you Should be go. seeing more oh, of you're him not soon. on the radio station, and I don't have anything to plug anymore. <laughs> How weird. <laughs> so we'll see, uh, we'll see all those guys uh, at comedy, guys and gals, comedy on uh, Thursday at Southtown Pub. Eight o'clock is when that happens. Ten bucks for fair or foul today. If you win, the topic for fair or foul, Travis, you ready for this? What is this? Your parents following you on social media. Mm. You've just been introduced or woke into this world. Yeah. Uh, I've essentially had uh, Facebook just a hair longer than my mom. 
I'll say that. So I, I kind of, it's selfish of you to just now acknowledge this. Right. Because the rest of us have been over here uh, working with this for a while. Only you specifically, if we're being totally honest. You're the one, but that's because you have a very enthusiastic, supportive mother mm. that absolutely gets your humor. Mm. No one else does. I don't know that she gets it. She tolerates it and then sends me follow-up questions to specify on it. As a mother should. <laughs> In this case, my mother, uh, as many of you may, may or may not be aware of, yeah, they are. she is an incredibly Christian conservative woman. Mm. Uh, so the content that Gardner and Chris put together for me to say on air, oh, uh, oh. I had to defend. Do you see this, Gardner? Go, like, mm. Mom, hey, I just read the script, Mom. I just come into work, and they put some notes in front of me, and they're like, hey, Dan, son. Yeah, you like, most <laughs> certainly sure <laughs> okay. as hell don't read the script. <clears throat> so my mother is currently a friend of the We Are Live page. She mm. liked our page, and so she follows all the content. And, of course, that would be at the same time in which she sees her son posed as chubby Tupac mm. with Mardi Gras beads. And of better course... Than, better than gay Tupac, Jesse. Mm, very true. That's also a good point. <laughs> I'm the gay Tupac, bro. And then, of course, I got this question a week ago. Why are you eating cinnamon rolls in a shower? That's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. So... That's a question I had to answer before Sunday school this past weekend. So, um... Yeah, that's uh, the today's fair file, uh, being followed on social media by your parents. Some people do well. Some people have a nice back and forth with their mm -hmm. parents online. I don't know how people do that, but it's I, I could not relate more to a Seinfeld episode than when uh, he was married to, what was the woman, George, was married to? Don't. Damn it. He was married to the woman that everybody on the set hated. And... She basically wanted to become friends. It's actually with, incorrect. That is correct. Spoiler alert, they never got married. Oh, they didn't get married because she licked the envelope and she Oh, died. oh my God. Sorry. How dare you? She dies. But in this case, where he hated the merging of worlds and because his new fiance was going to start a friendship with mm. Jerry, Lane, and Kramer, and that was too much for George, this is that situation for me right now with social media. There is, we are live, Travis. And there is Travis who goes to church five days a week and absolutely <laughs> praises the Lord's name uh, and he gets an opportunity to do so. Habitual liar, Travis, is that what you meant to say? <laughs> mm. 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 Travis was getting extra mouthy before the show and he kept slandering one of uh, Gardner and I's favorite artists. Uh, we, do we need to do a, an in-depth traffic review? Mm. That was that was floated out there as punishment. Let's, okay, so no, 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 we'll just skip it. We'll okay, get to it because you yeah, because you're going to sit up here and accuse me of coming up with an incorrect excuse. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a Facebook comment. Here we okay, go. Okay, here we go. Uh, a great one from uh, Jamie Moyer's Fancy Foyer. And okay. if you're on the live stream, thank you for tuning in. Uh, hit that share button or else. Uh, oh. Boxers are uncircumcised. Excuse me. <laughs> He, you know what? He didn't even bother with the private text line that we have. He goes, I'll put that on Facebook. I'll put it out there. Answer the question, please. It was obviously directed at you. That was not even close. <laughs> you guys wear boxers? I don't wear anything. Not enough containment. Ain't none can get Travis this. wears gym, whatever gym shorts are next there to is, um... Dude, you have gym shorts on under <laughs> your jeans? Hey, man. Well, you never know when a game will break out. <laughs> Is that a black thing? That is absolutely a black thing. How, you just but that's about bad for running. that's bad for containment. I don't well a lot of flopping. Well, the, the basketball shorts have room. They allow you to <laughs> better breathe. wear some biker shorts underneath. Do we still call them biker shorts? Biking shorts? Or compression shorts? Compression. <laughs> I call them bike biker <laughs> shorts. <stuff. laughs> Why? 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 Is that because they were bike brand or because back then spandex was only used it in, in a bicycle? It might have been both. <laughs> They are. I would even call them like volleyball shorts. <laughs> they're not volleyball shorts. I had a volleyball I had a pair. Wear them. I used to. I used to rollerblade in some compression shorts. And no, they. Okay, if you're contain. doing an athletic, let me just quick tip for everybody. Tip. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm. uh, if you're going to do something uh, combat involved or where there's a lot of movement, you go uh, cup with the container in the cup. Okay. Right, and then compression shorts over that oh over over that yes so you go cup strap compression and then whatever goes well, you over put that. your drawers on 
Well, you put the. What are you doing? Are you doing? Are you, putting, are you, doing, are you, are you put, grappling? Are you putting? Are you playing basketball? So I, I don't wear. You don't wear a cup when you play basketball. No, but if you're wrestling, you do, are you now, putting? If it's a if it's basketball, you just go underwear, compression shorts, shorts. Yes. If you're trying to avoid the flop. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Your thoughts right. on flopping? There's mm-hmm. a lot of flopping in basketball, oh, though, boy. especially at Duke. Uh huh. That's what I said. <laughs> 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 I'm so proud of that. Don't encourage that. Uh, how about this from uh, our boy? I believe this is Steve in Des Moines because we're big in Des Moines. Mm-hmm. Steve, share us into your Facebook feed. Let's see how we can grow in Des Moines like a cornfield that's left unattended. That'd be nice. My mom saw me on Facebook in a Halloween costume with a painted on black eye. She thought I had gotten into a fight and told me to come home. The pick was three years old. <laughs> <laughs> see? See? And, I, and look, it's not a matter. It's just certain questions i said it last week it's not that i have problem with the answers it's just the questions are never ending so you start with why are you eating a cinnamon roll in a shower it's a fair question which is a fair question but then it leads to who came up with the idea what was the purpose yeah. of the cinnamon did roll in the shower did you explain your well, role here as a creative driving force i did and that led to more questions why are you choosing to eat cinnamon rolls Correct. in a shower why right. do you think that will compel an well, audience to what watch it, what you're trying to do what it has forced to with what we're trying to do with the reimagined we are live podcast going great by the way thanks all for all the support there our numbers are fantastic God thank bless, you folks mm-hmm. like the what, downloads i'm always surprised like people take time to press download sorry go ahead. when i share something on my personal facebook right and i don't do it that often yeah like if i go to my I've, facebook I've timeline it's all People sending me bear stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, oh, sense. have you seen this bear story? Yeah, out. I saw it two days ago when it first broke. I see it all the time. Do you have Google alerts for bear stories? Bear? No, I just see them. Mm. Or they're shared with me. It's just constant. So that's what it is, basically, for my timeline. But I'll share something from time to time. And I shared the planet wall creative video. You and did? I think I mentioned this already. Those but are great, is, by the way. This is another thing where it's... The, when your parents are following you, right. I get a call from my mom mm. almost immediately. No, a text right away. Is, is that girl supposed to be there? Mm. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, yes. <laughs> that girl on the video. <laughs> yes. What girl are you talking about? I'm texting. And I'm trying to send another text. And then she calls like it's an emergency. And it was the Instagram. This is actually, this is actually she's down. It was the Instagram booty joke. Thing. Yeah. Uh. We were making the you know joke about Travis looking up big booties on mm-hmm. on Instagram. Yes. Typical Tuesday. And my mom was, I still haven't asked her if she showed it to a coworker, and that's why she was freaking out. I like that because it means she's got her head on a swivel. It's one of those things. She's looking out for right, her boy. Right. Exactly. Like if you came home and you're like, I rolled through a stop sign earlier, and a cop may have been following me. She's going to be peeking around, yeah. looking for it. I think. I think she's probably getting to a point with those types of questions, though, and that concern where she's probably going to ask me at some point, how do I explain to people what you do? There it is. That's ultimately what it comes down to. That's what it comes. I think parents obviously want the best for their children, but I ultimately believe it comes down to them having the shortest answers during small talk. It's mm-hmm. fair. So they want to be able, if someone at their job or someone at the church or the neighbors in passing are asking, how is Gardner? How is Travis? How is Chris? They want to be able to say, oh, why they're did you, doing why fine. Did you just, why did you stumble over the most simple Because I, did, I thought it'd be weird if they asked your mother, how is Denman? Mm, fair. So, and this good, an, good answer. See, that's what that's a for. first mm. informed answer I've got from him in 18 months. <laughs> that's that's very I actually believe this one. <laughs> and then so the question, you know, I think parents just want to be able to say is, Carter's doing great producing radio. Chris is doing well at sales. Well, Travis my mom is not in jail. Me, my mom would call me Chris. Chris. She was like, oh, Gar- my baby Gardzi. And, and that happens along middle school because PE teachers have to start basically cattling you yeah. around, right? And you're like, right. uh, Denman, yeah you, yeah, you got that. You're that guy. Right. Whatever. They do that. I remember that whenever people would start calling my house because that's no cell I phone had the same thing then. happen. And you'd have some 12-year-old boy call and speak to my father and be like hey is Denman home and he's like which one that's exactly yeah what my dad and my yeah. dad he's like there are several and my dad would say which one and he wouldn't he would pause and that then has that, so would, he would screw with yes. whoever was calling I was gonna say now thinking about it talking about it out loud I do the same thing yeah right you have to you gotta mess with some dumb it's a kid. dad thing what are they about to talk about so it's in my dad 
at this time too, especially. Was it before or after you shaved his back for the weightlifting competition? That's well, that's the Thanks thing. It was around that time. Oh, so yeah. my dad's doing like amateur bodybuilding. He goes with the shaved head look. Nice. I've always said like at this time in my life, he kind of looked like a cross between Bruce Willis and Cal Ripken. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's any girlfriend I had, they're like, Oh, your dad. I'm about to say. All right. Nice. It's really annoying. I would weird. imagine. Now it is. Um, it's my kind of weird. So he had that look. He was doing some amateur bodybuilding. Um, he I had cring- run marathons. I, I, I cringe every time you say amateur. Um, and then he uh, he had that, that shaved head clean look with the, with the Oakleys. Mm. Damn. Did, yeah. he, did he do the circle goatee? He did at one point, Damn. yeah. Damn. No, he was... Plus, well, he was my third base coach. Sounds like an in-shape Michael Chiklis. Yeah. Why are you yeah, trying to make me good. run to third? You know I can't make it. Mm. I'm going to get thrown out, and then mm. you're just going to yell at me. Awesome. What's the worst sport that you played more than one season? You know what I mean? Like, what were you bad at that you kept on going back to the well on? Oh, good question. <sighs> well, I only, like... I'm a good question. In terms of organized sports, it was all baseball for me uh, growing up. Were you any good? Like, I was on a traveling select team, but, I mean, a lot of kids do that now. Yeah. But I think yeah, back then... back then there was a little more... We played 60, 65 games a year. Jeez. Damn. And it was... So you're probably pretty good. We would play in the winter. Like, we would practice in the winter. We had a workout facility. Oh, wow. Um, I was okay. I wasn't a great hitter. I wasn't a... It was Scrappy utility. Part of the reason there. I'm such an anti-buntide, as I like to say, mm. mm-hmm. against what I call the surrender bunt. Some call it a sacrifice bunt, but there's really no nobility in it in sure. any way. <laughs> so I don't know what you're I'm sacrificing. Exci- I'm excited for Ben Fred to get in here and talk um, baseball with you. But I, uh, it's because I was forced into bunting in certain situations, especially key situations. Would you call this childhood, childhood trauma? But yeah, partially. Okay. Yeah, most certainly. But my, and that's why I like to say I have an agenda for this, Travis, but I also like to different. detail why I have an agenda so people can make an informed opinion on whether or not they would join this movement. I don't want to lie to people. That's fair. I want it to be an honest movement, much like carte blanche with bullpen carts. <laughs> Thank you to I, buy Jack for the t-shirt. Yeah. Those are available at the We Are Live. I have uh, one on today, actually. You do. Can we get a close up? Can you, can you um, do a little shimmy in front of the camera? You're going to have to tell me when I stand get up. Stand up. Stand up. Slow. Uh, there it is. <laughs> Look at that. That is the carte blanche movement yeah. if you're watching live. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know where I was going. We got sidetracked. There. The fact of the matter is that we're all embarrassed and we embarrass our parents every yes. day. Yes. Oh, okay. That's yeah. ultimately what I it came back to. I can't disagree with that. That's the only thing. I mean, like I said, I'm not ashamed of what I do for a living. I'm just ashamed my mother had to speak about I feel, it. I'll, I'll, I will be here's filled with do. guilt. Here's what you do now. Here's what a you little do. Bit. You say, go to midcoast.media and you can see everything we do. It's all there. It's basically a breakdown of everything that happens in now this you office. you know damn well our mamas ain't going to no my damn mom website. Will. My my mom, mom will. Here's what my mom would do right now. So how can I watch it on there the radio? There it is. I right. get that all the time, too. You can't watch it on the radio, Mom. Mm-hmm. It's not on the radio mm-hmm. anymore. It's off the radio. Right. It's a podcast mm-hmm. with video cameras. Right. That's what it is. It's hard to explain technology. Now, see, when you, see, now that's good. Now, you've gotten further with your mother than mine because when I get to podcasts, I now have to take the next two and a half hours to explain what a podcast yeah, is. Yeah, it's difficult. My grandma, Evans, has a better command of really anyone that mm. I've talked to about it. And she's just like, she's, she's down with it. And just, so, okay, real quick, I need a ruling. Okay. So but when, now, now, Grandpa Evans, real quick. He doesn't know what the hell's going on with yeah, him. Yeah, and I was, Grandpa, and I don't. I respect wor- him. He also probably worked for a living. Right. Yeah, I respect. Yeah, this is the guy who like fought in Korea, hmm. came yeah. back to a base in California, was going to come home for Christmas, but didn't have any transportation. Hitchhiked his way into Kansas. Jesus. It was a blizzard, so he went on the to the jail. Guess I'll live here in now. Kansas and said, asked if he could stay in a cell for the night. Stayed in a cell for the night and then carried on back. And then went to nine years of night school at WashU to get a business degree. So we just I have ultimate not respect like for him. <laughs> we're not made, and I'm not <laughs> going to try to. Yeah, don't explain podcasts to Grandpa. No, and and grandpa, grandpa thought. Out of grandpa mind. thought when when they got a wireless. They got computer for the first time. Right. When it's all set up, the modem's there, and then they have the wireless router, and the wireless router's flashing. He's like, oh, that's flashing, Chris. I think that means we got an email. That's where he was when the, when this all started. 
That's fair. That's that's difficult. Is it? I am his, not is going to. Flawed? I am not going to talk to him like a child no. or anything like. He deserves more respect. He than does. That. You're correct. And I, so we just don't have the conversations about what podcast. Yes, episode. Grandpa Evans. That is hundreds of emails heading. I just kind of say it's kind of like a radio show, but on the internet. You should you should say I'm going to need you to backhand me before I tell you this. Well, let's just get that yeah, out of the way because I deserve it. Correct. Yeah. Mm. So okay. So yeah, these are guys telling stories of growing up in North St. Louis, mm. and he's like, "Oh yeah, on the weekends, my dad would sit out on the porch, and then he'd give me a bucket, and I'd walk across the street to the bar with a dime." And they'd fill the bucket up with beer, and he'd just sit on the porch on a Saturday. That sounds awesome. That yeah. is dope. Man. Except, no? Well, except for some of the other stuff. Yeah. Well, oh. there's that. They got to, like, take baths, like, twice a week. Oh, and, there's that part. Yes. But they were drunk. Well, that helps you get through it. So, okay. I, I did so that for a ruling, part of my life. Jesus. A ruling, uh, when people ask me what I do, I have three options here. Okay. Mm-hmm. I say, uh, like, uh, media sales. That's a quick one that people aren't going to chip away too much at, right? Yeah. Immediately look down at my feet. That's option two. Okay. That's when you talk about us, right? Right. Well, uh, it's a, what was it, a podcast or something. Media else? sales. That's the mm-hmm. beginning of it. Right. And then if you have to continue with more detail, yeah. your head starts. Uh-huh. <laughs> What you, what we get of? to work with the coolest people in the world. We've got eight million jillion sponsors, and I love all this. But still, there's a deep hatred for ourselves inside that uh, won't third, allow what's me. What's the third one? Third option is I go complete 180, and I go full local douche, <laughs> and I start bragging about, well, you know, I'm a host. Uh, you know, check out uh, some trivia, some comedy. Uh, I don't know if you heard of the Poskers. Like, you do that. Oh, and you God. And you really, I have to wear my hair a little more slicked back, though, and then I have to kind of walk around looking down on others uh, in that position. Those are three variables that we can go with. I will say this. You cannot make the word podcast sound sexy to a girl when you're hitting on her. You, you like, you'll be like, oh, so what you do for li- Oh, I have a podcast. We like, despite the success like, of podcast around this country. Well, normally it's, like, it's not at the point where you go. You know why? Like, so what do you do? So this podcast. Hello, hello. <laughs> well, well, there's, normally, ma'am. there's more than there's more than one. So if you're like, I'm the president of the United States, people go, Oh, there's one of you, and I understand that. Right. Whenever you say I've got a podcast, they're like, So does my step cousin, yeah. who lives in my mom's closet. So then the next question is, So what do you do for a full time job? And then I go, Well, it's this podcast. It <laughs> the podcast. I'm on salary. <laughs> <laughs> Come up with content for that we podcast. Ha- we are co- we have a commercial office space. We are supported. And they're like, okay, Mister. Oh, hey, bl- you bless your heart. Hey, bless, hey, bless your heart. Hang on, wait. that's coming. Yeah. Next round's on me. Yep. It's okay. <laughs> I got it. And you can like, and that's the thing. And you got So again, my Christian conservative mother, she has to be able to take this information to church. Mm-hmm. So when it's time to give a testimony, yeah, right. she's got to be able to say, and the Lord <laughs> is blessing Travis, my oldest boy. He is doing the podcast. And you need a reaction from the audience, and mm-hmm. you don't really get a reaction yeah. when you go, that, my boy is doing a podcast. Could she, Everybody in the church just go, oh, bless his heart. Could she do he this? Pray, he, not, he could be doing drugs. They're going to pray for you. They could pray she ask the yes. congregation to subscribe on iTunes? That'd be great for, you know. So I, can, just I can definitely try nice to do bump. that. I can maybe next, I'll go to church Thank this you. Sunday. In the middle of my a testimony, I'll be like, the Lord has blessed me. Bless me so that he can continue blessing me by Get subscribing to We Are Live. That's right. The Lord says subscribe to the scripture uh-huh. and on iTunes or where any podcasts are available. Yes. Spotify is great these days, mm. we tell you. Uh, yeah, so that all came from our fair foul topic where you can win fair <laughs> 10 bucks to Southtown Pub. <laughs> Email us, wal at weareliveradio.com. Send us a sentence, a paragraph on why that topic is funny and your thoughts, and uh, you can get it rocking, everybody. Again, we've got Chris Davis from KSDK coming in. Uh, other things happening oh, in the about, world. Let's get into it, baby. Let's go. It's about that time to discuss a little case that's taking place down in Florida. Mm. If only if I had a, a great title for this news story. Hmm. Mm. How best mm. to describe this? Gardner, mm. do you have anything in mind? Uh, Far be it from Florida. This does not sound like Florida. Uh, oh, my God. Today's lead story, Kraft Macahorny and Sleeve. Why? <sighs> Why? That's so awesome. What a great time. Look at that. Do I need to start filtering all of our our funny quips through Jamie Crockett? Instead of macaroni and cheese. Kraft, macaroni, 
and sleaze. Are either of you proud of yourself? Uh, a little bit. I was so... Gardner comes running Who into the that? office. So wait, 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 wait. So, so real quick. Travis, I, I got a title. I, I got... <laughs> I got a uh, small tear came down the right side of my cheek. Mm-hmm. I got former Olympian uh, and uh, UFC star Ben Askren. He's cool. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I've been wanting to do a video stream with him uh, during the live show. Gardner, well, I don't know if we could do this. I've got all, all kinds of things going on. And you come up with that on the fly? Crap. Oh, really? Macaroni. That wasn't on the fly. I no, no, it was on the fly. It took us about six it hours on the yeah. fly. It took us <laughs> half the afternoon. <laughs> okay. Okay. We, okay. Graphic, yes. We I literally had to take right. a lunch break in between <laughs> okay. creating that graphic All right. All right. to get that finished. Okay. Uh, new details coming out yesterday about Robert Kraft, who, of course, is the CEO, president, owner of the New England Patriots. He, of course, was caught up in a sex trafficking sting in Jupiter, Florida last week. And we are now getting details. We now know that Robert Kraft has been charged with a misdemeanor. And we sort of have some of the details from the police alpha David in regards to... Is that alpha David? Is it alpha David? <laughs> is, that, is, that is, top, alpha? is it the top is it like alpha David? Alpha David? <laughs> alpha David, come in here. Could, could a lawyer alpha, da- alpha David. <laughs> alpha David. Alpha David has, alpha David. Alpha you, David has stayed on the, uh, on the slide too long. Uh-huh. It is way past when the uh, streetlights came on. Dinner is getting cold. Alpha David is the new Jewish quarterback on Friday Night Lights. Oh, that's fair, too. I thought he was going to be your little cousin. Alpha David. How do you say that, Gardner? You have a dream team. Alpha David? There we go. Mm. See, I purposely mess up the legal terms so people don't mm. think I'm actually involved with the law. Okay, that's See, fair. I threw them off. Mm. All right, so in the report, uh, it reads, <laughs> this is going to be fun, Chris. Hang on to your pants. Literally. <laughs> Employee escorted. I got my compressions on. I got my biker shorts on. <laughs> this is from how the police res- described the incident. This is actually the day before the AFC Championship game and the day of the AFC Championship game. This is in Florida when the Patriots were taking on the Chiefs in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. So this is what it says in the report. The employee escorted Kraft to a room identified as JPPD Cam Two. Hey. I didn't name it. A little close to home. There, there, the two hugged each other, and Kraft took off his clothing, mm. laid face up on the massage table. <clears throat> and imp- I, they, Okay, mm. I'm really conflicted about this because I, it, it is a comical situation. Hold on, now let me I finish this. I can't get you, over you the can... trafficking part of it, and I'm getting queasy. So yeah, well, we're not even halfway home. Mm-mm. Don't worry, Chris. He's almost done. <laughs> As he laid don't, face don't reward up, him with a giggle. <laughs> laid face up on the massage table, employee hugged him again. At approximately eleven oh two, employee began. Oh no! Don't give me a time frame. Oh, we're getting the time frame. Hang on, wait. I'll be uh, Robert Kraft. Go ahead. Employee began manipulating Kraft's penis <laughs> and testicles, and then put her this head down by his penis. I can't deal with this. This went on for several minutes. Mm. After a few minutes, employee wiped Kraft in the area of his genitals with a white towel, helped him get dressed, and hugged him again. Kraft gave employee one $100 bill, plus at least one other identifiable are you, like, are bill. You, do you enjoy this? Yeah, Robert Kraft did. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> and allegedly, my ass, you on camera, player. Like I'm on camera right now, your ass got caught getting that domage mm. for $100 plus tip. Oh, literally. Oh, <laughs> are you proud of yourself? <laughs> I guess you can say she was a Colin Kaepernick fan. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. Mm-mm. Nope. Mm-mm. So have we heard mm-hmm. more on it? So, okay. What so more do you want to hear? I want to know what's up with the sex trafficking thing. Was do this you? just something? T- I'm serious. I w- is this something? I, I got my Garagos on. Now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, I'm just checking one out. One reasonable doubt podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Is now, this now? No, really. Is this questions. really like? Were they there against their will with it, or is this uh, is this a play by the police to get a bunch of publicity and to scare people off from having going to prostitution places in Jupiter, Florida? Because quite frankly, I want somebody to follow up and be like, "We've arrested five of these dudes. This was a multi-country federal investigation." Right. If you're going to use the the term "sex slave" and trafficking, like it better as hell be real, well, and you better get results out of it and. Hang these people they, in the streets. They, like, this is horrible. Well, they did. I mean, it wasn't just this facility that right. was involved in the investigation. Right. So that part of it. So it's happening. There the is. sorted part. The right. real, real sorted part of it. Yeah. 
is do you understand what i'm saying it's though? just not one place right yeah i mean this was a fe- i mean this was a sting this is right. and it wasn't one there place are, there are stings that aren't necessarily when you put it and i don't know who originally put it out there whatever i believe the police have said this in a report mm-hmm. but if you put it out there and you're saying like we have essentially a factory where women come here they don't know what they're doing and then they're forced into this trade heads need to freaking roll like you get after it like that but yeah if you're also doing this to pump up your case and to do that, which people do, that's pretty gross. Like that's, that's very different. That's very different. What do you mean pump up that there's if not there, human trafficking or correct? Like oh, the, okay. I need to know what it is. This what's one, going it on. seems it's pretty clear. So have they got a suspect and people they're arresting or have arrested? No, yeah. They're, they're have they cut the head but, off? But the I snake? don't, I don't know who. I don't know who. Right. That's I, have, I want that. Information. I haven't dug far enough into it. Fair. Yeah. And it may be yeah. out there. Neither right. But do you, you have to agree with what I'm saying, right? I think I, I think there is a major, major. That's a huge. Well, like I yeah, if it, you shouldn't call it human trafficking if it's not human trafficking, yeah, which yeah, I yeah. think they wouldn't. I think I mean, they would. <laughs> I, I think, mean, it's pretty. I think police departments do that all the time. I think it's pretty easy to get caught lying right now, and, and you can't. You would not risk that. I I agree with Gardner in that regard, and and I can't believe I'm taking the side of the police in this particular instance. But it does does it make sense that you would exaggerate that especially knowing that you do have high profile you you wouldn't exaggerate it if you're going to make it as public right the way you have right because these are high profile i think think people do that all the time well these are high profile because then you're caught right not necessarily because you could like oh no departments can back off they're like well hey we looked at this wrong there's no oversight these guys did a press conference and they brought up robert Kraft's name how many press conferences but this has he even been charged you i I, yeah like he has been charged and he's got but he doesn't doesn't necessarily need to have a mugshot or anything like that he's facing a misdemeanor yeah and like i said he got caught up in the ring and i think as long as he didn't know whatever horrible thing was going on at this time, well, yeah, I assign, there's, there's I assign also, a different part to th- that. There's an issue to that, too, and I agree, like yeah. not knowing. But it's often we use this with college basketball, college football coaches as right. well, is actively being ignorant yes. to what is going on yes. within your Careful program that there. We're all pretty ignorant hey, here on hey, the show. I don't want to know because it's going to get me in trouble. That's not, this is, that's not good either. I mean, that's Agreed. actively trying to disassociate from a situation. Big difference between not good and being punished legally for it, though, too. Yes, but I'm not talking on legal terms. I don't need legalities to tell me what I think of someone. These are book. These are very or high, what should happen to them. But these are very high-profile suspects. Let's be completely honest. That's Jupiter, Florida, one of the more wealthiest parts of this country. A lot of rich people live in Jupiter. So these suspects that are caught up in this... I would imagine the police would be more conscientious knowing that these guys can bring in big time New York, LA lawyers who can handle these kind of cases. So if you are going to bring a case or a charge against Robert Kraft and you're using the term human trafficking, sex trafficking, you I'm thinking are almost certain knowing that you have enough information and evidence to support those I've never, statements. I've because never again, seen you're, so much trust in law enforcement from Travis. He's Monroe. using a lawyer that's local. He is using a local lawyer. Okay. Because interesting. Well, there's a number of things. Well, it's, but it's right, now, right. It's a, it's a person that is known within the court system there. Okay. So it's easy to communicate. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's easy to get things done probably. Right. And it's also a lawyer. I believe that was involved in this, um, Jeffrey Epstein deal. Oh boy. You know, that kind of is uh, bugging the president and oh boy. some of people he's involved with but, right now. I think he was involved in those cases as well. But ultimately Robert Kraft, to, I think to Chris's point, I think, yes, I'm not trying to is, absolve him. Of anything. No, I don't like, think you are, but giant I, difference between he's a, he's, actively participating no, in something where what you did is you said you were putting on your Mark Garrigus hat, right? You had an agenda, and that's okay. There's but no I think agenda. in this, but I think in this case, there's always an agenda. Fair. But I believe though that I side this, with the Armenians. I Sorry. think Kraft. What I think. Let's be honest. Not anything's going drastic is going to happen to Kraft here. He'll plea out. It'll probably be a misdemeanor. It'll be a fine when it's all said and done. He's not going to see jail time. This isn't going to trial. This isn't going. At, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. Chris is right. It comes down to who are the guys who are putting together this sex trafficking ring. Those are the people the story should ultimately be focused on at the end of the day, because I believe the charge for Robert Kraft at the moment is a misdemeanor. 
So it's my is, understanding. Yeah, yeah, so he's not even looking at real time here, and I believe this is his first offense, so I seriously doubt this goes any further than what it does. Was he not what? legally punished for that, you dance, know what was that weird? dance he did on stage? Mm. Yeah. Should have been. Uh, what was weird is I have to go back and look at the story and some of the details, but he went the day before, right? right. Yes. Uh, was it, what game was it? That was the, that was the game. That was the day before the AFC championship game. Mm. Okay. So he was on there. He was there that Saturday morning. And then again, the AFC championship game was that Sunday night. Yeah. So it looks like he got a rub and tug and mm. then hopped on the airplane and headed towards KC. Now, if you look at the details, I think it says he went that Saturday. Mm -hmm. He got stopped by police on that Saturday. For what? That's what I have to go back and look at. And then went back on Sunday. Interesting. So you're thinking maybe he was, the you police got to him, him and then they told him to wear a wire or <laughs> maybe be oh, a part I'm, of the case? I'm saying, why would you go, like, why would you go back? Well, they could, he couldn't be part of the case. They're charging him. So. No, he got pulled over for something else then, right? Or, I don't know. Or maybe they just wanted to identify him as Robert Kraft. Maybe when they pulled him over on Saturday, they were like, we, hey, Mr. Kraft. Or they just like, oh, hey, sir. And they wanted to check Ooh. his ID to confirm that he is who he was. It was like, oh, okay, sir, we were just checking so, something in the area. Go about your day. It's just, but if you're him, though, too, and you get pulled over, like, right after right. you're partaking in that, aren't you a little cautious after that? I like, think. Most, man, I left there. I get pulled over. Right. And they're asking me what's going on. Right. Maybe I shouldn't go back the very next morning. I think, to be honest, and I'm, again, I'm not excusing his behavior, but he's an incredibly wealthy, powerful man. You and didn't say white man. Yeah. Good for you. You wanted to. Good and for you. Because he's think thinking was, about all the he's I, thinking about all the high profile black dudes who've been busted with prostitutes. <laughs> 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 but I I do believe it was simply a situation where he was like, he probably like most men in those situations didn't think it was that much of a crime or something that the cops would really I mean legally uh, it's not it would bother him over so I, I'm sure in his head he's thinking I haven't done anything wrong the cop just gave me a warning he's doing his job I'm going to keep it moving I'm going to go back again before I have to head to Kansas City she mm -hmm. she does an excellent job on my Take glutes it easy. and my hamstring and I'm going to return before I have to head to KC so his crime is soliciting then yes that's it I think that's ultimately what it's going to come to. I don't, like I said, I As don't, a paralegal for Mr. Garrick, I, I can tell you that uh, this, in fact, is a misdemeanor. I, Do your research. I'm, cool. but, I, but I think I'm, I'm still more curious as to, I know what the law ultimately is going to do with Robert Kraft, which is next to nothing, and, and I understand that, but I'm curious to see what the NFL ultimately does because the NFL, you can't, he's been charged with, it's been charged with a crime. Whether it's a felony or a misdemeanor, however you look at it, he has been charged with a crime. I don't think they're going to take the action. I'm not, I, I'm not saying they're going to take away the Patriots, but they, the <laughs> NFL is going to have to do something. You can't sit up Give here. Give the Patriots to P. Diddy. That's the only acceptable I, answer. I, I, look, we've been doing this show for three years, and finally people are starting to make sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think he has to suspend his ownership of the Patriots and give it to the next African American within a 25, 30 mile radius. Would you? So no it? matter what they do to him, they'll do something. Who's the blackest dude in Boston? Robert that's, Parrish. That's I think a Mookie very Betts. good question. I think it's Mookie Betts. I think Mookie Betts would get it. Mookie. I haven't, I haven't been to Boston. I've only heard about Boston. <laughs> <laughs> so I watched Mookie. a great documentary the other night. Goodwill Hunting. Under, Mookie. Under, yeah, Mookie understated. Betts can get it or Jason Tatum. I think okay. those are the two. <laughs> yes, I like that. So there we go. Sorry. Go ahead, Gardner. Whatever the NFL does to Robert Kraft, I think the one guarantee we can make is that it won't be enough for Travis whenever they... Oh, yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Although, again, he is conflicted due to the amount of famous You are lady. You're, you're excited for your own outrage. Yeah. You know you're excited. I'm a little bit excited about what they're not uh, going to do. It's not because, look, I don't think there's... I don't know. I mean, the NFL doesn't really follow their bylaws anyway, so it doesn't matter, but... I mean, again, even if you find him, I think the maximum amount you can find a team is, I think, upwards to $2 million. The New England Patriots are the most profitable sporting franchise in the world, or one of the top five. So what is $2 million to the New England Patriots? What is $2 million to Robert Kraft? Like, so at the end of the day, it, I don't think there's going to be a punishment outside of removing him from ownership, and that's not going to happen. How about a so few, I don't think it makes I don't think it makes a difference. How about a few texts? Uh, just another patriot trying to deflate some balls. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, judging from the chubby Tupac picture, it's been a while since a game broke out. 
uh, from 636, talking about Travis's <laughs> physicality. Uh, Dan Buffa on the uh, Facebook comments, speaking of KSDK, he writes for them, and he's been featured in the New York Times. I have Don't heard. forget that. That is so cool. Uh, dude wanted to get laid. What gives? He didn't get laid, though, as uh, alleged by the police. I think... So uh, here, again, we talked about this a little bit. I, Travis, I don't know how you feel about it. Gardner, I think we're on the same page. If a woman would choose to run up the tab for some dude getting to sleep with her, there's some kind of exchange. I personally, morally, have no issue with that. Like, do your thing. The problem that you run into is you have so many... It's, it's like the black market with drugs or whatever. You get bad people controlling situations and people are forced into or exactly. are not allowed to leave. I think that's what so it I, I, I'm, I'm saying. I understand that part. The part where Robert Kraft wants to go get a manual for, uh, <laughs> for, his, uh, for an exchange of goods, that wouldn't bother me if the extenuating circumstances weren't attached. Uh, allegedly, they are. And they, and they this, generally this are. This police report, when they say uh, manipulate his penis, mm. it sounds like if... if John Mozalak was writing a police mm-hmm. report. Yeah. Like using Very a phrase like, like that. Yeah. <laughs> Having said that. <laughs> right. But then we did the necessary maybe, arbitrage after he had his. Yes. Yeah. Maybe the NFL will force him to sign more than one black skill position player. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You've got seven white right receivers. That's enough, <laughs> Mr. Kraft. There has to be some give we here. Gotta, we got, you got to at least throw three of these guys back. No, I don't think. Yeah, I think the only thing is that the vast majority of these situations, people are in the sex industry because they've been forced to. Yeah. And that's ultimately what I think where the NFL has to make a decision. You can't sit up here and, and I guess they can because they've done it for years. But Roger Goodell does these conferences and interviews talking about how they character care about, and about character, morality, integrity. Yeah. Hey, you guys are even, the ones who brought the morality and the, exactly. everything into this. And look, yeah. you're right. The Shield decided to bring it in, and they sit up here and they talk about respecting their female fan base. You can't sit up here and just roll your eyes at Robert Kraft they will. and the tug and rug, and they, they will. probably will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but again, it's just one of those situations where I guard to say that I'm giddy. I'm giddy because I know that we're going to see Roger Goodell say something completely stupid when it comes to this situation because he has a history of getting in front of the microphone and saying something stupid so much so he probably should be a host on this show. But at this point, I don't know if Roger Goodell can do anything for me, again, short of removing him from ownership that will satisfy critics or haters like myself. A uh, great time to tell you all about some wonderful folks that support us. Our friend Tom Bannister, you know him because he is a realtor with Circa Properties. Why would you work with Tom, Travis? Why would you work with Tom? He spent his life in St. Louis building an extensive background in sales and client relationships. As a fourth generation St. Louisan, sales is in his blood. He's raised listening to stories and learning lessons on presentation, problem solving from his father. He considers the best salesman he's ever met. Strives to make the process of selling your home as easy as possible for his sellers. And he has a team fully supporting him in the background. He prides himself on ability to listen and deliver what customers and clients want. Make sure they're having fun along the way. Contact Tom by email, tom.banister at circastl.com. Give him a call. Shoot him a text. Great guy. Wonderful logo, by the way. Check out that Bitmoji. That is beautiful. Uh, 314-393-5386. That's Tom Bannister of Circa Properties right here in St. Louis, Missouri. Cannot recommend him enough. Wonderful guy. You've probably seen him around town. Very friendly. Great basketball player in his day sure. at uh, Viani, I believe. So oh, wow. He, uh, we discussed having to, uh, we both got to guard David Lee in our uh, high school days, and Tom did not enjoy that either. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so Tom Bannister, check him out, Circuit Properties. Huge thanks to him. for He was a big sponsor at the Poskers. You'll see his uh, banner made by By Jack at the uh, Mardi Gras event this Saturday at 1860s. Travis, we got Fair Foul coming up. We do have a segment to get to today regarding Devil's Advocate. We got a few little time and we want to jump into that or we Oh, do we next do. Hour? Chris, it's a new segment on the Reimagine We Are Live called Devil's Advocate. He's laughing his sick f-ing ass off. I got it right today. Nice. Mm. Correct mm-hmm. segment, correct drop. Great job. For Devil's Advocate, what we do is we take two public figures that have been in the news recently, and we 
have decided to represent these public figures and answer some of the tough questions. So let's just say these public figures are not the most easiest clients. And so we have to do our best to defend them, Chris. Today, I've given you Ja Rule. You are going to be his publicist. You are going to be responsible for answering questions about Ja Rule and his most recent situations that have been public, both in documentary form and live performance form. Well, you know, he'll always be on time. Mm. I like what you did there. That's a song. Mm. I today will be defending <clears throat> Virginia Governor Ralph Northam. Yes, that's who I'm going to defend. The <clears throat> governor of Virginia, who of course wasn't sure whether or not it was him in a Klan or blackface outfit that showed up in his med school. I don't see an issue with this. Yearbook. Um, in fact, his response to that blackface, no, that was not me in that blackface. I did blackface another time when I was impersonating Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. But he's got a mean moonwalk. Mm. We've proven Maybe. as a society, if you've, uh, mm. if you got the moves, we forget. <laughs> Might I bring you to my next topic? Chris Brown, mostly innocent. Oh, boy. Mm. This is going to be a long show. So All you right. guys can ask each other questions. Okay. Um, we'll depose each other. Basically. Let's start with uh, Ja Rule. Oh, boy. So mm -hmm. let's start with Chris. I'd like to first, let, let me ask a question, or at least ask uh, the PR director for Mr. Rule mm -hmm. to... That's Dr. Rule to you. ...defend uh, not just the fire he didn't go to eight years of school hard knocks to uh, be mm -hmm. called mister mm -hmm. but uh a recent performance in milwaukee i believe it was travis yes it was uh, mr rule uh had a little bit of a what would you call it he had a moment of silence that wasn't supposed to have silence yeah let's um let's take a look actually <laughs> and then we can uh, react to this this is ja rule milwaukee bucks halftime show this past weekend for 90s night they said this is 90s night, so they brought out a 2000 artist. <laughs> oh, God. But my album came out in 99, so I guess that counts. Sanchez, we ready? I'm loading up. I'm loading up. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Are we ready? That was him buying time. That's Gardner when he can't pull up the logo. Here we go. I guess not. <laughs> oh, oh. Couldn't, couldn't he have bailed and done a live read? That's Ooh. what I always do. <laughs> why, why did Ja Rule... Why did Listen, he whoa, 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 whoa. First oh, of sorry, all, my you're going you're gonna to show this uh, slanderous video of my client. Okay. Uh, listen, uh, Mr. Dr. Rule uh, came ready. He was prepared. As you said, he was polite right. and asked the Milwaukee sound man... Most definitely not associated with uh, Mr. Uh, Rule. Okay. Even though he knew him by name and mm. probably brought him along, but mm. we'll say he's an independent contractor. Okay. He is an independent contractor. Sanchez? Sanchez probably shouldn't be here. Oh, boy. If you know oh, what I mean. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, what? Mega in the yeah. Wow. This is the route, Mr. Oof. This is Jowie. so easy. It's so easy. To go. It's so easy because he has a full time job. He would have been working somewhere else. What would you assume, sir? I can see, look at the crowd I'm dealing with here, Arbiter. Uh, so Mr. Rule is an entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, he's faced many, many uphill battles. I'm glad you Being brought up a black the... man in America. Oh, this is good. Wasn't even taught math because 1999. Wait, what? 1999 mm. is in the 90s and he was complaining about that. So a, a little ignorance is, is needed to be pleaded here. But also, I also have to say a few things. It's murder. Oh, gosh. Is Ja Rule taking these kind of performances it up. to pay back what he ultimately defrauded from all those oh, whoa, 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 whoa. during the fire festival? Hey, 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 hey. Take it easy. I believe the true criminal, Mr. McFarland, are you aware of him? I am. Do you see all those scams he was running? Yes. Ran one on Ja Rule, too. Interesting. Ja Just because Ja Rule has bravado and he's living it up and holla hollaing and he's a down-ass bitch right. does not mean... That he was in charge of that. He got taken just like you would have. Interesting, because I, I believe... Due to the misgivings can you of speak, Billy McFarlane. Can you speak to Ja Rule saying that it was not indeed fraud, but 
false advertising. Does Mr. Rule mm. not know the that's difference? That's what Billy McFarland told him. He was just he was towing the company line. Well, mm. I would say that's not actually true. Oh boy. Because there is videotape of Ja Rule within a meeting with a meeting with Billy McFarland and McFarland said no such thing. This is off camera. We have text messages to prove it. Oh wow. When we find the phone, we'll get it to you. Ja Rule is often... <laughs> this is not a court of law. He's often bullied by 50 Cent. Do you think your client deserves to be bullied by 50 Cent? Do you understand the... Stre- so listen, mm. bullying is the sincerest form of flattery where okay, I come from. Okay. So Ja Rule's excellent career. Where do you come from? Community work. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really? <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> Mr. Oh, yeah, goodness. That's right. <laughs> It's the rule. Ja Rule has dealt with the stress, anguish, and slanderous nature mm-hmm. of uh, Mr. Scent. Uh, did you know he was a gang member? Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Well, Mr. Rule did say, and this is coming from the Friends of Wall page, is he truly murder considering uh, his song, his music choice? Is it really murder? Are you saying your client is admitting to some form of murder? Oh, murder. I'm sorry. You must not be uh, familiar mm. with... Uh, is there a difference is, uh-huh. between the two? Can you explain? Well, you tell me. You Are t- there, does an A and an ER make a big difference in a word sometimes? Sir, I don't know what you're referring to. <laughs> can, you give us an, can, you, can, you, can you give us an example of what you're referring to, sir? <laughs> Here, yeah. Let me write it out. Hang on. <laughs> okay. Can I get a graphic with an A and an ER? Think ahead. Okay, okay let's, hear, let's hear about yeah. this governor. Yeah, How, Governor of Virginia. Travis, mm. yes. you must act as PR coordinator for Governor of Virginia, Ralph Northam. Okay. Um, what do you have to say for him? <laughs> I believe that there is a case of mistaken identity. We're not sure who those individuals are in that yearbook. We hope they come forward. I'm sorry, wait, wait, wait real quick, if yeah. I may. Sure. Um, there's blackface, right? Yes. Are you alleging that all black people look the same? I would never allege such a thing. Okay. I think in this particular case, uh, Ralph has a face. Because it feels like that that's looks what like, he's saying. Well, he has a generic white man's face, so I think but it's I can black see in how the photo. easier. Well, again, Mr. Northam has said he's not sure whether or not that's him in said photo. So I think we need to take that into account. But he's labeled in the photo, though. It's I, labeled know, as him in the yearbook. You you have to understand labeling. He's never gone to say he's never had, you know, hey, maybe this. Let's fix this. This yeah, isn't me. I, I do yearbook audits every six months. Well, you know, I think Mr. Northam has been working on behalf of these endangered communities for years. And I think his work speaks for itself. So for like him to... Like Mere, Meerkats? Well, he doesn't understand. Siberian Tigers? Look, who understands your book captioning? When was the last time any of you opened a yearbook? Mm-hmm. Again, a, respo- exactly. a responsible American adult audits their yearbooks every six months yeah. from yeah. grades K through 12. Well, if you can give me an example of someone outside of the governor that does that, then I'll be happy to answer that. But, but uh, the, you're, 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 you're sticking to hear the yearbook. He, the governor has admitted to wearing blackface at another event. He wore blackface... Uh, because he has a skin condition. A lot of folks don't talk about how shoe then polish why? is yeah. good for your pores on your face. He Can didn't realize... What's his skin condition? His, we don't like to release that medical information. That's completely private, sir. But he does have a condition. Can you explain why he coated himself in cocoa butter? Look, he was going for the authenticity. He has great respect for the African-American community, and he knows the African-American community loves cocoa butter. There's been a I'm lot sorry of, that he relates to his voters. That's, there's been a lot of backlash, and what party is he a part of? He, it's not about party right now for uh-huh. Mr. Northam. It's about being held accountable. He has apologized for being insensitive, but he looks whoa, forward wait, so he to was working with the people of Virginia to work on real issues. Real issues that affect everyday Americans. It's amazing how you and the media never take the time to talk to the people who are truly hurt on the ground. It's all about clickbait. It's all about ratings. You never want to discuss the issues of climate change. You never want to discuss the issues of police brutality. But instead, you want to sit up here and just go after Mr. Northam as he tries to address these important issues. We will not be distracted. We will not be bothered by this. We will move forward and continue to do whatever we can for the blacks. For African American, for, for, um, for Virginia. You did a good job of not being distracted there, Mr. Terrell. <laughs> However, you're trying to distract us, and you will not distract us Thank from you. a very important question and probably the final question. Okay. Please, please. 
Is his moonwalk good or not? Yeah, yeah. No, no, not one ounce of credibility has been given to this, despite claims of him being pretty good. You know what? I'm going to acknowledge this. Of course he has a great moonwalk. But he has nothing on this president who has moonwalked all over this constitution. It has nothing on this president mm -hmm. that has said he has been a thriller for the Russians. <laughs> it's nothing about a bad president. You know what I'm saying? This is no, what this is Mr. Nothing to do. <laughs> <coughs> Ralph Northam, 2020. <laughs> Whoa. <coughs> all right, Mr. Silver, mm. this is a uh, mm. Travis takes this one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I, I, okay. So you were way okay. too reasoned. No, I get. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You just, you got a backhanded win, is there? No, yeah. You just read my mind. I was literally like, so okay, so we take the insane approach right now. <laughs> okay, great. Well, Ja Rule spreads peanut butter anywhere you want and runs through the streets. That's why you should have went for him. Chris wins. No, oh, what? Wait, wait. Oh. A second. Oh, damn you. No, I'll, I'll give this one to, to Travis. Travis. Wow. I'll give this one to Travis. Uh, before we take For a break. For being insane. Before we take a break, <laughs> we're going to come back. We've got Chris Davis. He's from KSDK No, News. he is the left-handed hitter for the Oakland A's. No. Mm, no. Nope. Orioles. <laughs> damn it. Oh, there's two Chris Davis. That's My right. bad. You didn't say Chris with a K-H. <laughs> The white one or the black one? I need answers. Uh, i got to tell you about Gateway Powder Coating, gatewaypowdercoat.com, for all their capabilities. Their Facebook page is great as well. They show all the great work they can do. Pick from thousands of colors. They have a giant curing oven. Industrial production runs, large, heavy-sized parts. Welcome. They can powder coat just about any metal. That's Gateway Powder Coating. Support Mark and the guys at gatewaypowdercoat.com. Take your, your furniture. It's about to be grilling season, Travis. It's about to be hang out on the back. Let's have fun. You don't want your relatives coming over, seeing your skank ass rusted up. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the copy. That's in the copy. It's in the mm -hmm. copy. They don't, you, they don't want to see your skanky, rusted up lawn furniture, <laughs> grills, anything. They are making us a custom wall logo for the studio, and I am so freaking excited because they're badasses over there. They do great work. Gatewaypowdercoat.com for all of their capabilities. We're going to take a break. Gardner's going to get a dart in. We are going to get our friend Chris Davis in. We're going to chat with him. Get your fair fouls in. The topic today, your parents following you on social media, you can win 10 bucks to Southtown Pub. If you win, email wall at weareliveradio.com. Quick break. Jump into the Facebook comments. Let's talk it out, people. I'm going to hang out, have some coffee. We'll get Chris Davis in here, and we'll be back shortly.